Hey, what's going on YouTube guys? This is your boy C Wheel back to you with another video. Man, super excited to see you all again. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome. Here we do everything tech, all things tech, whatever it is, we like to do it. Uh, but man, if you are a returning viewer, definitely um, I appreciate you the most because you keep everything going. So today we are going to be going over overclocking the EVGA RTX 2080 Ultra XC. Yes, we are overclocking the car today. This has been a long overdue video, uh, but we are going to get in that today. So grab some snacks, grab something to drink, and let's get into this video. All right, guys. So what we're going to do first is actually go ahead and open up the Precision X1 software. And what we're doing with the Precision X1, of course, you know, you can install this software um, from EVGA.com. Uh, and this gives you a, a bunch of different information. So, of course, we have the RTX 2080 XC Ultra. Um, so, just some basic information here. It tells you the actual fan speed. Um, you can actually change the fan speed right here. Um, the memory. Uh, this is the base uh, clock speed right here, 7,000 megahertz. Um, and then the GPU core clock. The base speed is 1515. The actual boost clock goes up to 1815. But... There's also an NVIDIA uh, GPU um, boost clock, um, which actually takes it above that, depending on how much of the power target and voltage. So uh, we're going to go over that information as well. Uh, this right here is the voltage slider. Um, it really doesn't change the voltage. It just allows the actual car to use more. It gives you a range. Um, and then the actual power target percentages. Um, this actually goes all the way up to 130%. So we're going to get into that in a second. Um, if you, you have the hardware monitor, I actually don't use this. I actually use MSI Afterburner for that. Um, I do want to take a look at, um, click on LED. You can actually change the LEDs on the actual card. Right now it's on static blue, but I actually want that to be on rainbow. And if you click advance, yep, I understand. If you click apply, now you can actually have the car changing in the different rainbow effects. And here's the hardware monitor info again. I don't use that. Um, if I go back to VGA1 up here at the top, now if you hit the arrow here, um, it's going to give you the actual fan curve information. So here, if you click this, you can enable automatic fan control. Um, you can choose between aggressive, quiet, and stealth. Usually, when I'm playing games, I have this on aggressive. Uh, so it kind of handles everything for me. And then here um, is definitely what um, I want to show you. We're going to actually use this right here. This is called the VF Curve Tuner. And this allows the actual software, the Precision X1 software, to run a scan. It's going to test and we're going to do that uh, next. It's going to run a scan of the actual car. It's going to test everything. Um, and then it's going to give you actual score. Whatever score that you have here is what the software thinks that your car can overclock to. So if we have, let's say, for instance, if we get like a score of 90, then we'll go up here to the actual boost clock and we'll put in 90, then hit apply. And that's going to be an extra 90 megahertz uh, that your car can overclock to. Um, you can also do this manually, you know, anyway, you could choose your own scores of what you want to do. But I actually like to see because, you know, overclocking always depends on your actual hardware itself. So uh, what you could do again, uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go through the actual scan process and test that. Then what we'll do, we'll uh, run uh, some 3D mark uh, bench tests and see. Uh, what the actual uh, scores we get just on the base and then we'll overclock and see what type of scores we get after that All right, so let's go ahead and get started All right, so what you'll start to see is numbers will jump around the actual uh, Percentage targets will jump around and then some other numbers is going to change here uh, This takes about 18 to 20 minutes. So of course, I'm going to speed up the video um, But after this is done, you'll see what type of score we get All right, so 
Um, here's what we're going to do. This <laughs> The OC scanner crashed on me. All right, so we're not going to use the scanner. Uh, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how I manually overclock. Uh, and this is always <laughs> why you need to know how to, to just do stuff. So um, what we're going to do here, uh, we are actually, you know, when you're doing overclocking, you're actually supposed to do things in increments. Uh, so I'm not going to do this in increments because I already know pretty much what my uh, car can go up to. But um, if I were you, I would start off, if we were doing memory, I would start off with uh, maybe an additional 400 on the memory. Uh, and then on a the core clock, you could start off with uh, 50, you know, 25. And... I always raise my voltage all the way up. And again, this is not actually changing the voltage. Uh, this is just actually giving it more range. This is uh, just a slide, a slider for it. Um, and then for the power, I want to do max power. This maxes out, it says 130, which is an additional 24%. Um, and so I want to give the card all the power it needs. Uh, so when you're doing the overclocking in the GPU boost, um, it's going to max it out now as far as the fan speed um, I'm actually going to go click over here and I'm going to enable automatic control then I'm going to click on aggressive and from here um, I will hit apply and then you could test out your card and I'm going to show you what programs we're going to use to test um, your card out in um, so this is doing a manual overclock and so, you know, all you have to do from there is you could, once everything goes through and you're testing out. So like in this case, we would be doing 3D Mark. Um, and I would test out 3D Mark, um, let that run through maybe like a time spy or fire strike. If they, everything is good, I will go back and I would change this to maybe an additional 200. So instead of 400, it'd be 600. And then you could change this to additional 25, it will make that 50. And then you keep changing these options until you get to a point where your card either starts to, you know, it'll let you know once you hit the max because you'll see artifacts, um, your benchmark will crash on you and all that different type of stuff. Uh, but your card, you know, still be fine. Um, you know, before you, you know, you mess up anything on your card, it'll actually crash. It won't even let you get to the point of messing it up uh, from this standpoint. Uh, but you want to do the increments so you know exactly. You can kind of figure out where your median is. So what we're going to do, we're actually going to, I'm going to set this back to default. And what we're going to do just on the default base settings without changing anything, uh, we're going to go ahead and run 3D Mark. And I'm doing off screen recording so uh, we don't impede on the actual, you know, screen recording it takes a little bit away from the actual graphics card uh, processing. So, oh, there we go. Let's run a Fire Strike benchmark. And I'm not included in the demo, I'm just going to run just the actual benchmark itself. And we're going to see what score we get. Then we're going to overclock the car and then we'll see the difference in between the actual scores. All right, so as you can see, we have a fire strike score uh, just with the default settings on the car. No overclock It is 23,617. OK, so what we're going to do now, let's go ahead and overclock the car. And again, just to save some time, um, I'm definitely going to. Well, I'm going to show you the actual numbers that I might use on a normal basis. And then I'll show you exactly how far it could go before it starts to artifact and have issues. So we're going to change the actual memory clock to a thousand. And that's an additional thousand. So it's going to put us at eight thousand megahertz for the memory. We're going to change the actual uh, the GPU boost clock. We're going to do an additional seventy five megahertz. We're going to put the voltage all the way to the right. 
and we're gonna do the GPU the power where it's target we're gonna slide it all the way to the right so that's gonna be 130 all right and then we're gonna hit oh uh, let's also change we're gonna enable automatic uh, fan control we're gonna change this to aggressive and we're gonna click apply this is what I should play my games on um, so now the memory clock is at 8,000 uh, you're not going to see the GPU uh, clock speed yet until we get in game and I will actually I'm going to go ahead and open up MSI afterburner just for the on-screen display uh, you know so you could be able to see the actual core clocks and what that goes up to and let's run this again or let's run the actual fire strike again all right so what I'm showing you now you can actually see up at the top the GPU um, the actual temperature 60 degrees it shows the GPU information it's running at 96 percent core clock is 2025 so with the core clocks that you know we did the additional 75 megahertz on the actual core clock it shows the memory and then it shows the 8000 so here you know this is the on-screen display diagnostics from MSI afterburner and um, it gives you all the information CPU temp uh, the usage and the actual core clock on the CPU and I have i9-9900K overclock to 5 gigahertz on all cores at all times all right guys so as you can see uh, we're at 25,177 with the overclock so the score here 25,177 25,177 our initial score was 23,617 um, so that's roughly about a 7% increase almost. Uh, so I think that is pretty good. All right, now, so let's take a look at just a little bit of gameplay and see how that looks. Uh, we'll actually take a look at uh, Battlefield 5. So I'm going to go ahead and set this back to default. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and take a look at uh, some multiplayer gameplay because that's what most of you all do. <laughs> you play online uh, and it definitely uh, will tax on the graphics card and also on the processor. This is a new map, uh, Mercury, for Battlefield 5. It's pretty cool. All right, so right now you can see up at the top, uh, we're averaging anywhere between 128, 129 frames per second, 130 so we hover around 120 129 frames per second i'm going to move around and see if that drops all right so of course if i turn around to the actual bay we hover around 126 125 frames per second um and that's with just the default settings on the actual card and so let's overclock to see if we see a difference And so I'm setting this back to a thousand on the memory, 75 on the core clock. Let's raise up the voltage and the power. And we're gonna put this on aggressive for the fan curve, hit apply. Let's go back to battlefield. Okay, now in the same area that we were just at, now we're hovering around. So between 135, 134, 138, frames per second definitely it's a big difference uh, when you overclock your car so now what I want to show you um, I could definitely probably get my core clock up to a hundred and still be able to play games but um, I definitely keep it around 75 what I want to show you now though is if you take this too far so I'm gonna leave the memory on a thousand but I'm gonna take the core clock up to 125 and I just want to show you what's going to happen with the inside 3D mark on Fire Strike. Because uh, this, the, the plus 125 is actually too much of an overclock for my car. So I just want to show you exactly what's going to happen once we start to try to run the benchmark. All right, so I'm starting up Fire Strike here. Well, I'm going to attempt to start up Fire Strike. Sometimes it doesn't even let you get to that point. and it stopped it's crashing all right so as you can see <laughs> it could not complete the actual test 
it gave a zero so you know again you know when you're going through the overclocks definitely just do things in increments for the core clock you could do things in 25 megahertz increments um, like I said, I you know I pretty much max mines out at about 75 uh, plus megahertz. I don't go above that uh, because it's for stability and things of that nature. Uh, I find out that's the best for me. You know, depending on your graphics card, it may be different for you. Uh, so uh, hey, just let me know down in the comments what you think. And um, and yeah, that's overclocking the RTX 2080. All right, guys, thank you for watching the video all the way through. You saw how we overclocked the card ran some some games ran some benchmarks and all that good stuff uh so now you can be able to do this for yourself um i am definitely looking to get a rtx 2080 ti um i'm looking at possibly getting the asus uh rock strix version not 100 percent sure on that yet so stay tuned for that so we also got some new content that's going to be coming in the future so hey don't forget to follow me on social media um, you can definitely catch me on instagram twitter and also facebook i'll see you in the next video Thank you.